what's good YouTube, it's your boy Stats11, and I'm here to preview this week's three game series between my Washington Nationals and the New York Mets. Let's get it poppin'. So coming into this week, the Nationals are 77 and 58, the Mets are 69 and 67. Washington is second in the NL East, New York is fourth, there is an eight and a half game difference between the two. The Nationals are 34 and 24 in division play, the Mets are 32 and 31. In their last series, the Nationals swept a three-game series against the Marlins. The Mets won two out of three in Philadelphia. So here's what you need to know about the two teams going into this week. This is the last of six head-to-head -head series between the Nationals and the Mets. New York leads the season series 10 games to six, and the Mets are outscoring the Nationals in the series by a count of 84 to 78. The Nationals are unbeaten in their last six series. They have a 5-0-1 record in this span. And they're going up against the Mets team that was the last team to beat them in a series. New York won two out of three against Washington at City Field from August 9th through the 11th. And two of the three games in this series are day games. The series opener on Monday and the series finale on Wednesday. And now let's talk starters. On Monday, the Mets are sending out Noah Syndergaard. Syndergaard is 9-7 with a 4-14 ERA. In his last start, he went three innings, gave up nine hits, nine runs, walked one, struck out five, and he got the loss as the Mets lost to the Cubs 10-7. The Nationals are countering with Joe Ross. Ross is 3-3 with a 5-36 ERA. In his last start, he went four and a third innings, gave up six hits, two runs, walked four, struck out three, and he got the no decision as the Nationals won 7-2 against the Cubs in Chicago. So they're both coming off starts against the Cubs. On Tuesday, the Mets are sending out Jacob DeGrom. DeGrom is 8-8 eight eight with a 2.66 ERA. In his last start, he went seven innings, gave up five hits, four runs, walked nobody, struck out seven, and he took a tough luck loss as the Mets lost to the Cubs 4-1. The Nationals are countering with Max Scherzer. Scherzer is 9-5 with a 2.46 ERA. In his last start, he went four and a third innings, gave up six hits, two runs, walked one, struck out eight, and he got a no decision as the Nationals beat the Orioles 8-4. In the series finale on Wednesday, the Mets are sending out Zach Wheeler. Wheeler is 9-7 with a 4.41 ERA. In his last start, he went six innings, gave up seven hits, one run, walked three, struck out four, and he got a no decision as the Mets won 11-5 in Philadelphia. The Nationals are countering with Anibal Sanchez. Sanchez is 8-6 with a 3.80 ERA. In his last start, he went five innings, gave up three hits, Two runs, walked four, struck out six, and he got a no decision as the Nationals beat the Marlins 7-6. So here's how the Nationals can win this series. The Washington Nationals look to close out an eight-game homestand by zeroing in on a playoff berth this week as they host the New York Mets. For Washington, the magic number to clinch a playoff spot is 21 and will probably drop into the teens this week. But to make this happen, the Nationals must first face the Mets' big three of Syndergaard, DeGrom, and Wheeler. Luckily, the Nats have just the offense for the job, as they have been on a tear since leaving New York, averaging just over eight runs a game in this stretch, and that includes a game where they got shut out, by the way. So Washington can win this series by bringing the lumber and hitting New York's pitching hard. So that was how the Nationals can win this series, but now let's look at how the Mets can win it. For the New York Mets, there is no doubt about it, ain't no sidestepping either. It's time to sink or swim, and this series is, for all intents and purposes, a must win. New York seems to have tailed off since the last time they saw Washington, but the Mets seem to stop the bleeding by winning a series in Philadelphia this past weekend. The Mets now continue a gauntlet of a September slate that takes them to DC before they return home to face another playoff hopeful in the Diamondbacks and the all but certain one seed in the National League in the Dodgers. For this series in particular though, the Mets seem to have an edge on the mound as they will avoid two of the Nationals' big three. For this reason, I'll say New York can win this series by stellar performances from their big three. And now here's my thoughts. A team whose playoff chances are steadily increasing by the day meets a team fighting to stay alive. I look at this series, and here's what I see. The Nationals have the advantage offensively, but as far as this series is concerned, the pitching advantage goes to the Mets. As far as whose big three is better, that's a debate for another time. That's not to say the Nationals are completely outclassed this week, because a big reason they've built such a lead in the wildcard race is the performance of the non-Scherzer, Strasburg, Corbin starters. That would be Anibal, Joe Ross, and Eric Betty at his moments. This is simply saying the Mets are laying it all on the line this week, 
and the Nationals seem to want to live to fight another day. Which is fine because they put themselves in a position where they can afford to do that. But for this reason, because pitching is advantage Mets, offense is advantage Nationals, but intensity and urgency is also advantage Mets, so New York takes two out of three boxes, so I'll say the Mets take two out of three. So what y'all think? Who's taking this series? Is it the Nationals or the Mets? Let me know in the comments, and until next time, I'm Stats with Evan, and I hope you have a 100% day. See y'all later. Happy Labor Day, y'all.